Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into hyperbolic functions and now look at further the, at the catenary and look at example four, which involves finding the arc length or basically the length of the wire across that's in a catenary shape. So let's look at this example right here. So the example states the figure shows a telephone wire hanging between two poles. Um, at x equals negative b and x equals b. So there is our telephone poles right there. And that is how the cable is hanging across in a catenary shape. So it takes the shape of a, of a catenary with equation y equals c plus a cosh or hyperbolic cosine x over a and it says find the length of the wire or basically the equation of the length of the wire because we're just given variables there. So let's do part A then I'll go over part B afterwards which plugs in some numbers. So let's look at A right here. So yeah this is our catenary as y equals c plus a cosh uh, x over a like that. So to solve for the full length across here, this is the length, so we're asked to find the length of the wire. So telephone wire, telephone cable, like that. And that's just an arc length. So what we'll do is we'll recall the arc length formula and I'll call this, uh, yes, yeah, so recall arc length and I'll call this uh, equals to L and equals to basically the integral from uh, we're going to go from negative B to B and it's going to be a giant square root 1 plus dy over dx squared dx and you can see the proof for this in my earlier video and I'll put that all in the description below for arc length formula. So now what we need to do is well we need to solve this so we need to get dy over dx so we know that equation let's just write that down so we have y equals c plus a cosh x over a. So what we'll do is take the derivative of dy over dx. Derivative of c is a constant at zero. Now derivative here we get a and recall that the derivative of uh, hyperbolic cosine is going to be hyperbolic sine or sinh x over a. Then using chain rule times by uh, the inside derivative just be one over a. So then this is like that. This cancels with this. So what we're left with is just sinh uh, sinh x over a. And now what we'll do is if you plug this inside we get a squared. So also what I'm going to do is is well recall recall the hyperbolic trig identity that cosine or the uh, I mean cosh, uh, cosh x over a minus yeah that's cosh squared x over a and then we have the square of sinh like this x over a this equals to one so recall this identity for hyperbolic trig identity and I'll put the proof of this in the description below so now what we'll do is we could just move this over there and then what we'll end up having is yeah, is one plus cinch squared equals to cosh squared so that means then that what we have is I'll just put this all together so we have a one plus uh, cosh uh, I mean yeah one plus dy over dx like this squared equals two so we know that dy over dx equals to this so equals to a squared one plus cinch uh, yeah, not sine cinch x over a like that so then when we move this across we have one plus that equals two now we have a giant square root cosh squared x over a and then the square uh, roots cancels with this and we're just left with equals to cosh x over a. That's just what this whole square root thing equals to. So thus yes yeah, so thus what we have is L the arc length equals to the integral from uh, negative b to b and then this whole thing becomes well just cosh x over a. So cosh x over a dx like that. And also what we want to do is well recall that the definition of a hyperbolic cosine. Yeah, hyperbolic cosine or cosh uh, like this. I'll just put an angle theta just so it's just to illustrate it. So e is equal to the e by definition e to the theta plus e to the negative theta over 2. 
And now this is the exact same thing as if you were to put in a negative. So e, this is the same thing as writing e to the negative theta. And actually, before I even write that, it's the same thing as writing cosh uh, of negative theta, which by definition would just become, this becomes negative, e to the negative theta plus e to the negative, yeah, negative theta, of an, which is already negative, so that becomes uh, plus theta, like that. Let's take that out. So it just becomes plus theta over 2. So as you can see, this is the exact same thing as e to the theta, just, just switching these left and right. Same exact thing. That means that the negative, uh, so when, when we put negative theta, it's the same thing as positive theta. So we have a symmetric, yeah, symmetric about the y-axis. Yeah, so it also is a symmetric slash even function. So because of that, what we can do is, yeah, what we could do is write this as equaling to, just I'll just put a 2 in front. So this equals to 2 integral from 0 to b of cosh x over a because it is symmetric about the y-axis. I'll put an explanation mark like that. So we get, we get that over there. So put that over here and take the integral. So l equals 2, the integral of that is going to be, let's write this down, 0 to b of cosh x over a dx. Recall, now recall that this equals to the, the integral of cosh, that's just going to be, well, sint or hyperbolic sine. So we get a 2 times it by uh, here cosh is going to be sint, like that, sint. Uh, x over a, but then using the chain rule, 1 divided by 1 over a, the a gets flipped up here. So we get a like that by chain rule. And then we're going to evaluate this from 0 to b like that. So 0 to b, that means now we plug that inside, we get a 2 uh, a cinch b over a. And then minus, uh, I had put, put that in, 2a cinch uh, 0. So when you plug in 0 here, yeah, and now recall that cinch 0. This is, uh, the, by definition, this one's going to be 0 to uh, the power of x, or 0, minus e to the, I mean, not 0 to the power of 0, yeah, e to the power of 0. Then we have a minus. So the only difference between cosine or cosh is going to be the, yeah, is that it's a minus, uh, yeah, it's over here, right there. So this is the definition of cosh. The only difference is we have a minus for sine. So if e to the, going to be negative 0, it's going to be 0. Yeah, like that over 2. This just becomes now, well, 1 over, oh, 1 minus 1 over 2 equals to 0, like that. 1 minus 1, 0. So then this whole thing goes to 0, and we're finally left with right here. L equals 2, 2A, cinch, uh, B over A, like that. Yeah, so now this is our length, and uh, yeah, 2A, cinch, B over A is our full arc length across the cable, and that's the length of the wire. So now let's look at part B, which states, suppose the two telephone poles are 50 uh, feet apart, and the length of the wire between the pole is 51 uh, feet or between the poles right there. So that so assume the length is uh, 51 like that. So if L is 51 feet, and now the full length across is 50 feet. That means B is equal to 25 like that. And now if the lowest point of the wire must be 20 feet above the ground, how high up on each pole should the wire be? So we want to know what this length across is. So let's just draw that out that we want. So we want part B. Yeah, so if we have part B right here, let's just draw our Y, X axis like that, X, Y. Let's say we have a telephone wire or a telephone pole like that. And then draw this across like that. Yeah, so we have something like this. Those are the poles. This is going to be um, 50 feet across. And then we have the wire goes somewhere like this. And we have it, let's draw this better. Yeah, let's fix the drawing up uh, better like this. So now we have it like this. And then at the lowest point here, this is going to be a full 20 feet high there. So if this is 50 feet, we're going to set that as a center symmetric. So then at this point here, this is 
at uh, b is equal to 25. So b equals to 25 feet, and here we have negative 25 feet across there. So the point that we want to solve is, well, at this point here, this is going to be at x is 25, and then we need to solve for the y value there, and then it's going to be the exact same one here. Uh, this is negative 25, and then we have that same y value. And we're given that the full length across here, I'll draw this uh, better like that, is all the way across equals to L equals to 51 feet. So an extra foot. We had an extra foot due to the sagging as a catenary shape due to gravity. So let's see what we have. This is the origin there. And now we want to solve is, again, what is this y value? And so we want, we want y of 25. So y of 25 feet, this equals, so we know the equation is equals to c plus a cinch, or not, this is cosine, or uh, cosh uh, 25 over a, like that. So we need to solve for c and a. c, a equals whatever. So this is what we want right here. We want c and a. Uh, yes, yeah, so we want C and A, and then we can solve this right here, uh, and we get that height where the wire needs to be on the two poles across there. So get C and A, throw that in there. So what we know is that at the lowest point is 20 feet. That means that at X equals to zero, or the origin, uh, we have a y, a y of zero equals to 20 feet. This equals to, well, C plus A cosh, and then we plug in zero. When we plug in zero, we just get, well, zero. Yeah, and there's uh, 25. Yeah, that's the X, so it's just going to be a cosh of zero. And again, recall that the cosh zero, this just means that we have cosh uh, zero equals to E to the zero, and then we have a plus E to the negative zero over two. That's just going to be, well, one plus one over 2 equals to 2 over 2 equals to 1. So this just goes to 1 like that. That means what we have is 20 equals to, so 20 feet equals to C plus A times 1. So we have 20 equals to C times, uh, yeah, C plus A. Yeah, so this is what we have. And now the next thing we know is that the length of the wire is equal to 51 feet. And we know the equation is this 2a cinch b over a, that means we have yeah, 2a cinch, and then b is equal to, well, 25. So 25 over a, like that. So now what we have is, well, two equations. Um, yeah, two equations, we have two unknown c and a right here. Now to solve this one right here for a, there's a inside here, it's not that straightforward, and then I'm going to put a little bubble here, B equals to 25 feet. Yeah, like this, B equals that. And that's why we have it over there. Yeah, now in solving this one, it's not too straightforward. Um, like Hoggle's book, just what they did was graph it and then find the intersection point and yeah, found intersection point and found A. So it assumed that this was just a function of A and that's what I actually did right here. I used a Wolfram uh, calculator. Let me just uh, move it up here. So here is what I have done. Yes, yeah, so here's what I've done. I use the Wolfgram uh, calculator. Just put 51 equals to 2 times a times cinch 25 over a. And what it does, it graphs it like this. And that's how the uh, 2a function looks something like this. And then it also graphs 51. And, and then you see the intersection points across there. And this is a function of uh, a right there. So that the horizontal axis, that's the A value. So this is A. And then we can get A values, two of them, negative one and a positive one. Here's some alternative uh, forms. And as you can see, solutions, A is roughly negative 72.38. And then here, A is roughly 72.38. And there is what we have. Because we're looking at X is, yeah, for X is greater than zero. I mean, yeah, we're going to assume A is greater than zero as shown before. So for a is greater than zero, we get a is roughly equal to 
0.38. And recall my other videos that A is just a physical constant or a ratio of, of several physical constants like gravity and density and tension. So it's going to be uh, positive almost certainly. So we're going to assume it's this one right here to deal with that. Yeah, so if we know this value there and we also know that C plus A equals to 20, that means that C equals to 20 minus A, just move that across. So put that over there. And then what we know is now that Y of 25, remember this just equals to C plus A, cosh 25 over A like this. So we could just throw this inside and throw the A value inside. We get here a 20 minus A plus A cosh 25 over A like that. And then throw that in a calculator. Yeah, and here I've, what I've done is, is use a DuckDuckGo search engine calculator just because uh, change things up from the usual Google that I use just so we're not dependent on any one corporation. So what we have here is put that into 20 minus 72.3843. That is our A value. Yeah, I'll just use uh, more digits right here. 4, 3, like that. And then yes, throw that inside, then plus 72.3843 times by cosh 25 over, again, that's 72.3843, that's our A. And what we end up getting is 24.36. So that means that this height is going to be, well, 24, point, or roughly equal to 24.36. Uh, feet like that. And this is our final answer. So that's how high the wire uh, should be located on the poles. So thus the wire should be at a height of 24.36 feet above the ground on each pole. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much all for today. Hopefully you followed along. So some pretty cool techniques in solving it. You could just use calculators like this to uh, solve at the intersection point you get the values. Anyways, that is all for today. If you learned and uh, like always you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing these notes on Steemit. Also make sure to check out my uh, the math forums that I am uh, moderating. Anyways, that's all for today and thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.